morning, friends, and welcome to the celebration of the Holy Eucharist. This Sunday morning, which is the festival of the Nativity of Our Lady. Uh, being celebrated here in Ojai at the Church of Our Lady and All Angels. Let us now proceed with our homage to Our Lady. Mother made all holy, throned upon thy knee, evermore the almighty child and Lord we see. While with awe thou gazest on the wondrous face, blessed among all women, Mary full of grace. We bow in homage and adoration to thee, our heavenly mother, queen of the heavens, star of the sea, guardian of humanity. We greet thee in thine angel hosts, shedding beauty and blessing among men and in nature. May we serve thee in our fellow men. O Holy Lady, Mother of the world, Queen of love and compassion, with all our hearts we pour out our love and devotion at thy feet, and we offer ourselves as channels of thy wondrous tenderness, as agents of thine ever-ready help. We pray thee to use us in thy holy work, that we may grow like thee, our glorious mother. O Holy Mother, Queen of our hearts, we dedicate our lives to thy service. Ave Maria, gratia plena. Angels and archangels, now around the maid, where the world's creator on her knees is laid, where she worships o'er him, God and man in one, Son of highest heaven, Mary's royal Son. Amen.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. May the Lord purify me that I may worthily perform his service in the strength of the Lord who I repel all evil from this his holy altar and sanctuary and from this house wherein we worship him. And I pray our Heavenly Father that he will send his holy angel to build for us a spiritual temple through which his strength and blessing may be poured forth upon his people through Christ our Lord. Amen. Brethren, let us now lay the foundation of our temple. Christ is our foundation and our chief cornerstone. We are no more strangers at home. God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together, groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Except the Lord build the house, their labor is but lost that build it. The foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. Let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Christ is our foundation and our chief cornerstone. O Lord, thou hast created man to be immortal and made him to be an image of thine own eternity. Yet often we forget the glory of our heritage and wander from the path which leads to righteousness. But thou, O Lord, was, hast made us for thyself, and our hearts are ever restless till they find their rest in thee. Look with the eyes of thy love upon our manifold imperfections, and pardon all our shortcomings, that we may be filled with the brightness of the everlasting light and become the unspotted mirror of thy power and the image of thy goodness through Christ our Lord. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, bless, preserve, and sanctify you. The Lord in his loving kindness look down upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord absolve you from all of your sins and grant you the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. With praise and with prayer shall our temple be built. To God alone be the glory.
Lord be with you and with my spirit. Let us pray. We thank thee, O God, for the sweet and laudable pattern set before us by thy holy Ma Lady Mary, Mother of Jesus, whom thy church hath ever held up unto her people as a bright example of purity and godly life. Mm. Sorry. Blessed be the Lord. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, the undivided unity, eternal, immortal, invisible, to whom be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord our God, how excellent is thy name in all the world. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, the undivided unity, eternal, immortal, invisible, to whom be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Order and earth all 
strength uphold and sustain all creation. Receive our prayer. Thou whose beauty shineth through the whole universe, unveil thy glory. For thou Thou only art the Lord, Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God, the Father. The Lord be with you, and with my spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. We thank Thee, O God, for that most sweet and laudable pattern set before us by Thy Holy Lady Mary, Mother of Jesus, whom Thy Holy Church hath ever held up unto her people as a bright ensample of purity and godly life. And we pray that on this, the festival of her nativity, there may shine forth within us the light of ever-growing purity and holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, who, art, who in thy loving kindness hath appointed for us a ministry of reconciliation, that by it our feet may be restored to the path wherein we should walk, grant us that firmly resisting all temptation we may follow that path unto its glorious end in thee, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who art the strength of them who put their trust in thee, without whom nothing is strong and nothing is holy, we commend to thy fatherly goodness those who are afflicted with this pandemic in our midst, we pray thee to strengthen and bless those who minister unto them through Christ our Lord. Amen. We praise thee, O Lord, for the example and assistance given to us by thy holy martyr, St. Alvin, the patron of our church throughout the world. And we pray thee that under his protection thy church may continually serve thee in all good works through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, with all our hearts we praise Thee for the great glory of Thy most holy Archangel St. Michael and all Thy holy angels. We thank Thee for their wonderful wisdom, their supreme strength, their radiant beauty, and as their resistless power is used always and utterly in Thy service, so may we, following zealously their resplendent example, devote ourselves wholly to the helping of our brethren through Christ our Lord. Amen. Teach us, O Lord, to see thy life in all the peoples of thine earth, and so guide the nations into an understanding of thy laws, that peace and goodwill may reign upon earth through Christ our Lord. Amen.
The portion of scripture appointed for the epistle is taken from the 8th chapter of the book of Proverbs, beginning at the 22nd verse. The Lord created me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts acts of old. I was poured out from everlasting, from the beginning before the earth was. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abounding with water, before the mountains had been shaped and before the hills was I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth nor the fields nor the highest part of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. And when he drew a circle upon the face of the deep, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he set the boundaries of the sea, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him as one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in the habitable parts of his earth, and my my delights were with mankind. Now therefore listen unto me, O ye children, for blessed are they that listen to me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. For whoso findeth me, findeth life, and shall win win favor with the Lord. Here endeth the epistle. Thanks be to God. Special gradual of today is for festivals of Our Lady. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. My soul doth magnify the Lord. And my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior, for he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, henceforth all generations shall call me blessed, for he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. Cleanse my heart and my lips, O God, who by the hand of thy seraph didst cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal from thine altar. And in thy loving kindness, so purify me that I may worthily proclaim thy holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that through my heart the love of God may shine forth, and through my lips his power be made manifest. Amen. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel is taken from the first chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, beginning at the 39th verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country, to the city of Judah, into a city of Judah, and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. 
And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, she was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Whence is it to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in mine ears, the babe leapt in my womb for joy. Blessed is she that believeth, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden, for behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed, for he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Good morning, friends, and thank you for tuning in to our live streaming celebration of the Holy Eucharist on this festival of the Nativity of Our Lady. You will please, re please forgive any mistakes uh, made by uh, myself. Um, this is the first week that we've um, started the use of music again. And any change tends to uh, throw a, a monkey wrench <laughs> into the workings. But I thank my dear wife for uh, providing us with the music this morning and thank Father Richard for taking care of the um, electronic side of things. Um, I would like to welcome all of our friends, even from around the world, our friends in South Africa, and Europe and, uh, and other parts of the United States. We are still laboring under difficult circumstances during this pandemic, but we know that God is still in charge. God is on the throne. All things work out according to his divine plan. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to to thy word. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. So reads the gradual of the Feast of the Nativity of Our Lady, always celebrated on September 8th, and to, for the Sunday that falls within eight days of that festival, we call it the Octave of Our Lady. That's why we're moving the celebration, which occurred on the 8th of September, to this Sunday. Blessed Virgin Mary has appeared in every age and at various places on earth ever since the foundation of the church. She is rever re revered not only in Christianity but even in Islam and, is and her birth is mentioned in the Quran. Uh, the festival of the Nativity of Our Lady uh, dates back to the early days of the church, especially in the Eastern Church, probably as early as the 4th century and possibly even before that. It didn't become popularized as a festival of the church in the West until around the 7th century. But... Our Blessed Mother, whom we often refer to in the liberal Catholic Church as the Mother of the World, is often spoken of as the Queen of Heaven and the Queen of Angels. In many works of art, and certainly in the iconography of the Orthodox Church, she's always directing our attention to her Blessed Son, our Savior. And she has always been and always will be held up as 
our pattern of humility and purity. Mary, exalted mother of our Lord, is a constant reminder to us of God's constant continuing love for his creation. In addition to the historical personage as the mother of Jesus, Mary also represents symbolically and archetypally the very feminine aspect of God itself. She represents the mother principle throughout all the universe. She represents also in our concepts of the creation of the world what is called the virgin matter, the water upon which the spirit moved in order to bring about creation. And I believe that that's one of the reasons why Mary is referred to as star of the sea. The word Mary in Latin actually means uh, many waters or seas, mar. The deep, the pleroma, the fullness of all that will be brought forth in manifestation. Now all of these topics can be seen as reflections of our Blessed Mother. They can be investigated and studied and meditated upon in a deeper understanding and discovery. In each and every one of these facets is held deep in mystical treasures waiting to be unfolded to the seeker who will take the time to med upon, meditate upon them. But I'd like to offer a few thoughts about our Blessed Mother, in addition to these archetypal aspects, which can also show forth and symbolize within the constitution of every human being. That being, what, that aspect which we call soul. Or at least it symbolizes, she symbolizes, the enlightened soul in which Christ can be born. The soul is the feel of our psychological activity, thinking, emotions, memories, desires, will, and so on, as well as the so-called paranormal aspects of our character. However, the soul is not the highest, but the middle dimension within the human constitution. Higher than the soul is the spirit, which is considered to be the real self the source of everything we call good, happiness, wisdom, love, compassion, harmony, peace, unity, oneness. The spirit, or what we may call the Christ within us, is largely unknown by most of us in our normal waking consciousness. While the spirit is eternal and incorruptible, that spark of the divine which lays deeply hidden within each individual. The soul acts as a link between the material body and the spiritual self and therefore shares some characteristics of both. The, the soul can be attracted toward the spiritual or towards the material realm and being thus the battlefield of good and evil within each one of us. It is only when the soul is attracted toward the spiritual aspect and merges with that true higher self that it becomes eternal and divine. For the Christ to be born within, he must be born of the virgin. Virginity implies purity, and in a cognitive sense, this means that for something truly new to be born in the waters of the mind, those waters of the mind must be stilled, must not be agitated, tossed about, nor can they even be defiled by uh, being shaped into any other form. This is the one chief aim of most meditative practices, Oscillations of the mind must cease if the spirit is to light upon them. This stillness, this virginity, in the esoteric, in the esoteric sense, it suggests 
why creative flashes so often come in reverie when the ordinary preoccupations of the mind have been put to rest. However briefly, the mind is at rest and ready for inspiration to settle upon it. So, meaning the words in the, of the, prophet, the psalmist when he said, Be still and know that I am God. Now, in Roman Catholic theology, uh, they sometimes refer to Our Lady as the mediatrix. Uh, that is to say, if Mary had not been born, there's a possibility our, our Savior couldn't ultimately have made incarnation into this experience. And so, in a certain way, within Roman theology, she becomes a co-mediator with Christ. But we esoteric Christians see the truth behind this theory as the development of the soul aspect within each one of us. This is the means whereby the Christ nature is born, and it is through the Christ nature within each and every person that all shall find their way to the Father in heaven. We find in some of the writings of the teachers of profound wisdom a term taken from the Sanskrit language, antakrana. Occultists explain the word as the bridge between the higher and the lower manas or minds or the spiritual ego and personal soul of man. So it is the soul in which we can access the spirit. It is through the soul, the Mary part of us, that Christ becomes a reality. It is through the Christ self that we ultimately find access to Father in heaven, sometimes referred to as Atman or the divine spark or true self. And so then, indeed, the soul quality leads us to and directs us to the Christ who is to be found within. She, indeed, is the co-mediator and co-director of our freedom and our salvation. She is not that light, but she leads to that light. The Feast of the Nativity of Our Lady points the way to a realization of the truth of the Christ within each and every one of us. The virgin soul is the means whereby we come closer to the manger within. Our epistle this morning is taken from the Book of Wisdom and instructs us that means of her I shall obtain immortality, for she is the mother of fair love and patience and perseverance and of holy hope. Let us therefore say with Mary in the words of our gospel, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Be it unto me according to thy word. Now unto God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, three persons in one God, be ascribed all honor, might, majesty, and glory, now, henceforth, and forevermore. Amen. Let us continue with the act of faith. We believe that God is love and power and truth and light, that perfect justice rules the world, that all his sons shall one day reach his feet, however far they stray. We hold the fatherhood of God, the brotherhood of man. We know that we do serve him best, when best we serve our brother man. So shall his blessing rest on us, and peace forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit.
We adore thee, O God, who art the source of all life and goodness, and with true and thankful hearts we offer unto thee this token of thine own life-giving gifts bestowed upon us, thou who art the giver of all. According to immemorial custom, we now mix water with this wine, praying thee, O Lord, that we may evermore abide in Christ and he in us. We offer unto thee, O Lord, this chalice with joy and gladness. May the worship which we offer ascend before thy divine majesty as a sacrifice pure and acceptable in thy sight through Christ our Lord. As this incense rises before thee, O Lord, let our prayer be set forth in thy sight. Let thy holy angels encompass thy people and breathe forth upon them the spirit of thy blessing. May the Lord enkindle within us the fire of his love and the flame of everlasting charity. Brethren, we have built a temple for the distribution of Christ's power. Now let us prepare a channel for its reception. And to that end, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable unto God the Father Almighty. May the Lord receive the sacrifice at my hands and sanctify our lives in his service. 
We lay before thee, O Lord, these thy creatures of bread and wine, linking them spiritually with ourselves and praying thee to receive through them our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. For here we offer and present unto thee ourselves, our souls and bodies to be a holy and continual sacrifice unto thee. May our strength be spent in thy service and our love poured forth upon thy people, thou who livest forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. But today we chiefly praise thee for the help and example of the Holy Lady Mary, star of the sea and mother of our Lord, queen of the angels, our pattern of humility and purity. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with thrones, dominations, princedoms, virtues, powers, with cherubim and seraphim, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name evermore, praising thee and saying, these our oblations have served as tokens and channels of our love and devotion toward thee. But now we pray thee to receive, to purify, and to hallow them as earthly channels of thy wondrous power. We desire to offer this holy sacrifice, especially for thy holy Catholic Church. For Donald Trump, the President of these United States, and all that are put in authority under him. For all our bishops, clergy, and faithful, for those here present, and for all who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially for And for those who are again about to enter this earthly life through the portal of birth, and likewise for their mothers-to-be, especially. Likewise do we offer it for all those thy children whom it hath, pl who, 
who have been delivered from the burden of the flesh, especially for that freed from earthly toil and care, they may enjoy the felicity of thy presence, evermore praising thee in word and deed, O God, everlasting, living, and true. Wherefore, O Holy Lord, Father Almighty, we pray thee to look down on and accept as a channel these offerings, and with thy Holy Spirit and word to bless, approve, and ratify them, that they may become for us the most precious body and blood of thy Son, who, the day before he suffered, took bread into his holy and venerable hands, with his eyes lifted up to heaven unto thee, God is Almighty Father, giving thanks to thee, he blessed, break, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat ye all of this, for this is my body. like manner, after he had supped, taking, also taking this noble chalice into his holy and venerable hand, again giving thanks unto thee, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and drink ye all of this, for this is my blood. As oft as you shall do these things, you shall do them in remembrance of me. Joyful and triumphant, O come ye, O come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, monarch of the angels. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him. 
come let us adore him Christ the Lord yea Lord we greet thee throned on thine altar ever to thee be highest glory given word of the Father splendor everlasting oh come let us adore him oh come let us adore him come let us adore him Christ the Lord Amen Wherefore O Lord and Heavenly Father we thy humble servants bearing in mind the ineffable sacrifice of thy Son, to offer unto thee this, the most precious gift which thou hast bestowed upon us, in token of our love and of the perfect devotion and sacrifice of our minds and hearts to thee. And we pray that thou wouldst command thy holy angels to bear our oblation to thine altar on high, there to be offered by him who, as the eternal high priest, forever offers himself as the eternal sacrifice. And we do pray for thy servant who ministers at this altar, that meetly celebrating the mysteries of the most holy body and blood of thy Son, he may be filled with thy mighty power and blessing. Likewise, we pray thee to sanctify thy people here present with these thy heavenly gifts, and through these mysteries do thou hallow, quicken, and bless them that both in their lives and in their, in their hearts and in their lives they may show forth thy praise and glorify thy holy name. All these things do we ask, O Father, in the name and through the mediation of thy most blessed Son, for we acknowledge and confess with our hearts and lips that by him were all things made, yea, all things, both in heaven and earth. With him, as the indwelling life, do all things exist, and in him, as the transcendent glory, all things live and move and have their being. To whom with the Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, be ascribed all honor and glory, throughout the ages of ages. Amen. Let us pray, instructed by the words of sacred scripture and following the tradition of Holy Church from of old, we now say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> Here do we give unto thee, O Lord, most high praise and heartfelt thanks for the wonderful grace and virtue declared in the Holy Lady Mary, our Heavenly Mother, and in all thy glorious saints from the beginning of the world who have been the choice vessels of thy grace and a shining light unto many generations. And we join with them in worship before thy great white throne, whence flow all love and light and beauty through all the worlds which thou hast made. O Son of God, who showest thyself this day upon a thousand altars, and yet art one and indivisible, in token of thy great sacrifice, we break this thy body, praying that by this action ordained from of old, thy strength, thy peace, and thy blessing, which thou dost give us in this holy sacrament, may be spread abroad upon thy world. And as thou, O Lord Christ, was made known to thy disciples in the breaking of bread, so may thy many children know themselves to be one in thee. 
even as thou art one with the Father. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, with thy spirit. O thou who in this adorable sacrament hath left us a living memorial and pledge of thy marvelous love for mankind, and us therein graciously draw us into wondrous and mystic communion with thee, grant us so to receive the sacred mysteries of thy body and blood, that our souls may be lifted into the immensity of thy love, and that being filled with a high endeavor, we may ever be mindful of thine indwelling presence and breathe forth the fragrance of a holy life. Amen. who desire to partake of the body and blood of our Lord, draw nigh and receive this most holy sacrament.
under the veil of earthly things, now have we communion with our Lord Jesus Christ. Soon with open face shall we behold him, and rejoicing in his glory be made like unto him. Then shall his true disciples be brought by him with exceeding joy before the presence of his Father's glory. <clears throat> and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. We who have been refreshed with thy heavenly gifts do pray thee, O Lord, that thy grace may be so grafted inwardly in our hearts that it may continually be made manifest in our lives through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. with thy spirit. Ite misaes Deo gratias. peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. May the Holy Ones whose pupils you aspire to become show you the light you seek, give you the strong aid of their compassion and their wisdom. There is a power that make, there is a peace that passeth understanding. It abides in the hearts of those who live in the eternal. There is a power that maketh all things new. It lives and moves in those who know the self as one. May that peace brood over you, that power uplift you, till you stand where the one initiator is invoked, till you see his star shine forth. Uh -huh.